Shalom. Giving all praise to the Heavenly Father, Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, Rahakwarash. Double honors to the apostles, the elders at Great Millstone who rule well. Peace and salutation as always goes to the elect. And I wanted to do a uh, response to this video. Um, and this video was uh, uploaded all right, by uh, the brother Karata Zaba, head of the GMS Baltimore camp. This is one of his pages, Biblical Defenders. Subscribe and be edified. The title of this video is Oscar has fallen back to sleep. Caleb was an Israelite, world and kindreds of the earth. All right. And um, I just wanted to respond to one point in this lesson because, um, as we all know, Vocab and his cohorts, they bring up the same arguments, the same concepts. It's always centered around all nations can be saved. Uh, they try to find these loopholes. Um, in one sense, they'll say, well, you know, we understand the first covenant was for the Israelites, but Christ came and opened it up for all nations. All right. But then they'll go and find something in the Old Testament when the Old Covenant was uh, in, in, intact and say, well, right here, the heathen were involved. So which is it? All right. They're, they're all over the place and they're just looking for loopholes talking about love, bringing out the same precept when it goes into neither Jew nor Greek. Um, and they still don't acknowledge the book that contains the history of the Israelites in the Greek captivity. So they'll never have understanding of why it says Jew nor Greek. And we've constantly went through those things. Um, you have people on the comment boards because uh, Apostle Gabar here in this video, Daily Edification exhortation three he did a response to it as well and i'm responding actually to this video as well what exactly did rahab receive from the israelites all right and uh you have people on the comment boards you know mocking and scoffing saying more vocab stop already you know which here it is you're at the feast complaining about the food well don't come in <laughs> all right and i myself even get tired of this guy vocab all right, but uh, you know this this truth, this thing of ours is above me, my feelings, my emotions, and there are particular points we're going to use that they go off on to edify, because a lot of our people are coming out of Christianity and need to know and understand what's true. So we're going to continue to 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 go into these points. We're not going to stop. The scriptures speak of a great millstone, and when you look up that word. Matter of fact, let's look that up. Uh, in Revelation, the 18th chapter, the great millstone is spoken of, which is speaking of Yahweh Shai. Okay. But we come in that stead. This is Revelation 18 and 21, and we're going to grind everything to powder. Okay. So if you're tired of videos where we go into vocab Malone, don't click them. There's various other videos. Okay. But we're going to edify. That's what we're set up to do. Defend the gospel. It says, and the mighty angel took up a stone like a great millstone and cast it into the sea, saying, thus with violence, that great city Babylon, all right, shall be thrown down and shall be found no more at all. Prophecies fulfilled, right? Now that word. Great is megas, all right, we know mega, and you go to millstone, mulos, megas mulos, <laughs> uh, a millstone, a large mill consisted of two stones, upper and under, okay, two stones, upper and under, and we can liken that to northern and southern kingdom, the tabernacle of David, and what did the, what did the Lord say that we would do? All right, or anyone who came up against the spirit and power of Yahweh Bashem Yashai, what what would happen unto them? Because Christianity is a failed organization, and they're trying to ride the wave of the Israelites. Here in that video, you have this dude Oscar, who was all right. He is an Israelite, but he left off all right from claiming that 
you know, to go back into Christianity, and you're going to have that. You can have that, nigga, all right? This is uh, Matthew 21 and 44. 144, call hello, y'all, but Shemiel Shai. And Yahweh Shai is this stone, Matthew 21 and 44, and whosoever shall fall upon this stone shall be broken, but whomsoever it shall fall, it will grind him to powder. Okay, grind him to powder, man, and that's what's happening to these false philosophies. They're being ground, beaten into powder. Okay, so the reason we, we go into these uh, lessons is because they make slip-ups where we can go and edify because we like doing the work. So if you got a problem with it, hey, just don't click the video. Anyway, I'm going to play this portion of the video with this guy in the middle said and deal with it in the Holy Scriptures. The consistency was saying that they're it, with having them being Israel rooted in their identity. For example, how would they deal with Joshua chapter two, which is an amazing shadow of like a, a, a what do you call it, a, a Christ archetype or a shadow of the of the new covenant, where Rahab, who is outside of the covenant, she's she's a prostitute uh, in Jericho, and she is she is saved and she's saved and she's brought into the fold, and like how how does that work? in right. their view right. so again when you okay so he's speaking of rahab the harlot which no scripture ever said that rahab the harlot and her family would have inheritance rights okay now even at the time of solomon when the throne of david was established you had particular notable heathen who were treated fairly and who who had uh, uh, uh good dealings with King David and Solomon, one of the notable ones we can just bring up right off top is Hiram. All right, Hiram, 1 Kings 5 and 1, and Hiram, king of Tyre, sent uh, his servants unto Solomon, for he had heard that he had, they had anointed him king in the room of his father, and Hiram was a lover of David. Now, David beat down these kingdoms, all right, but amongst particular of these kings and kingdoms, there were particular kings that he had dealings with. All right. They gave him some of their daughters. All right. Like the king of Ammon. You see. But does that mean Hiram had an inheritance? Okay. And was on the same playing field as King David and Solomon? No. He helped Solomon and David. Okay. 2 Samuel 5 and 11, and Hiram, king of Tyre, sent messengers unto David and cedar trees and carpenters and masons, and they built David a house. Okay? Just like you, you heathen are going to build up the kingdom of heaven. All right? Now, Tyre, okay, is ultimately originally inhabited by Hamites. You can just look up Tyre here. All right, Tazar. Tyre, Iraq, a Phoenician city in the Mediterranean coast. It's a very um, popular for imports and exports. Okay, so having control of that region, which David did and Solomon, okay, was very important in what? Forwarding the kingdom in the throne of David, business wise. Now, when you go to Joel, the third chapter, Speaking of a, 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 a prophecy, all right, Joel 3 and 1, the nations will be judged. For behold, in those days at that time, when I will bring again the captivity of Judah and Jerusalem, I will gather all nations and bring them down to the valley of Yahweh Shapat and plead with them for my people and for my heritage Israel, who they have scattered among the nations and parted my land. So we know that this is a future prophecy. And as you continue reading, okay. And they have cast lots for my people and have given a boy for an harlot and sold a girl for wine that they might drink. It says, yea, what have ye to do with me, O Tyre and Zidon? So that, that doesn't mean that this nation isn't going to be judged. OK, clearly right here. Tyre and Zidon. OK, the Hamites and all the coast of Palestine, the Arabs who were key factors and key players in the sub-Saharan slave trade 
Will you render me a recompense? If you recompense me swiftly and speedily, will I return your recompense on your own head? So the, these people are going to ultimately be paid back as a nation. Now, amongst these particular nations, could there be a, a possibility that we have favor on some of these heathen? Absolutely. Absolutely. The same thing happened here in Joshua dealing with Rahab the harlot and her family because of a good deed she did. But this does not <laughs> grant her inheritance rights. This does not grant. All right. Because this is a, a, a first covenant. OK. And now in the first covenant, we know when it came to the inheritance rights. OK. If a particular father didn't have a son, his daughter would have to marry one a man of her own tribe her father's tribe so that the inheritance wouldn't get you know mixed up because that's how serious it was so Rahab the harlot and her family did not have inheritance rights all right were they treated fairly absolutely will we treat particular of the heathen fairly and have favor on some of them in the kingdom absolutely that does not take away from the punishment that is coming to them, though, as a nation. Let's get Psalms 149. Because we're, we're going to get into Rahab the harlot and cut that, too, as well. But this is uh, salvation right here, right? Psalms 149 and 4, the Lord, for the Lord taketh pleasure in his people, and he will beautify the meek with salvation. Salvation hasn't come yet. OK, and salvation is being delivered from your enemies and ultimately receiving the new covenant, which is the law, statutes and commandments written in your inward part. No nation outside of the Israelites will have that. That's what we mean. That doesn't mean the heathen won't be in the kingdom of heaven. They will be there. But their role will not be the role that the Israelites have. Their relationship with the most high will not be the relationship that the Israelites have through his only begotten son. That relationship of who's going to be set up in heads of the government and have perfect bodies, everlasting, eternal life will only be given to the Israelites. And prophecy tells us there will be a difference as the king the, the, in the kingdom. When the heathen see us, they will say, surely this is the seed blessed by the most high. They're going to know because there's going to be a difference. They will have to be taught the laws. Pursuant to. Uh, uh, Hebrews, the eighth chapter, no Israelite in the new covenant will need to be taught. Pursuing the Micah, the uh, fourth chapter, we're going to teach the heathen the ways of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. And that's a good thing. And while we're doing that, and in the process of it all, can we have favor on particular families of the heathen? Absolutely. But that doesn't mean that they're going to be in the position that we're going to be in. It's simple. It's simple, man. That doesn't grant them uh, uh, inheritance rights and, 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 and new bodies and the laws written in their inward parts. No. We'll just have favor on you. We're, hey, hey, we're going to, you know, though there's punishment coming, you know, we're an upright people at the end of the day. So the Lord will beautify the meek with salvation. Let the saints be joyful in glory and let them sing aloud upon their beds. Let the high praises of God be in their mouth and the two-edged sword in their hand to execute vengeance upon the heathen and punishments of the people. Okay, this is salvation. Vengeance upon the heathen and punishments of the people to bind their kings with chains and their nobles with fetters of iron. So... What are, you, what, are, what are you talking about? This still stands to execute upon them the judgment written. This honor have ye all his saints. Praise you the Lord. So the judgment written all through our prophecy will still take place. So what they try to do, because like I say, first of all, the Christians, what they, you know, when we cut them, you know, on the covenants, well, they say, well, yeah, we understand the Old Testament, the Old Covenant was only for the Israelites, but the New Covenant is for all. Now they're going back and saying, well, under the Old Covenant, heathen were in, uh, uh, joined unto the Israelites. 
No, they weren't joined unto the covenant. The law, statutes, and commandments in the covenant was only given unto the Israelites. You see? And we were to teach all nations how to live. That doesn't grant them inheritance rights. So when you go to the book of Joshua, the second chapter, that's where uh, Rehab first pops up. Okay, and uh, a note is that Rehab, the harlot, okay, she's uh, mentioned in the Messiah's lineage. Okay, and Salmon begot Boaz of Rehab, and Boaz begot Obad of Ruth, two heathen women. All right, which on another note proves that the seed of an Israelite man can be put into a heathen woman and an Israelite of that tribe will spring forth no matter what. OK, and Rahab was not an Israelite. Ruth was not an Israelite. Clearly, when you read this story, Rahab, the harlot. OK, we can just look up her name real quick. I believe it means wide. <laughs> And harlots are wide open, right? <laughs> Rahab. Okay. Rahab. All right. Um, wide. A harlot of Jericho who aided the spies to escape, saved from the destruction of Jericho, married Salmon, an ancestor of David and of Hamashiach, commended of her faith in the book of James. So as we go back to the story, I'm just going to start at the point of verse nine. You can read down uh, if you read up, you know, if you want to get more out of the story. But here's uh, Joshua two and nine. And she said unto the men, I know that the Lord have given you the land because this is right after the Israelites, you know, years after that, they've, they've leaving out of Egypt. The nations round about heard of what happened in Egypt with the Lord. God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob did to the Egyptians, how he swallowed up the, their armies. So people are in fear as the Israelites are coming and marching through these lands on their way, where? To the promised land. And she said unto the men, I know that the Lord have given you the land and that your terror is fallen upon us, the heathen, and that all the inhabitants of the land faint because of you. They were scared of the Israelites because the Lord was dealing with us and the angel was before us that whole time. Can't take away the uh, presence of that angel and the importance of that angel who went before us, which we know in spirit that Jehovah says, for we have heard how the Lord dried up the water of the Red Sea when ye came out of Egypt and what ye did unto the kings of the Amorites on the other side of Jordan, slaying them. All right, Shehan and Og whom ye utterly destroyed. And as soon as we heard these things, our heart did melt. She's a heathen, man. She's her and her family's heart did melt. Okay, now, no, uh, one, uh, another note is, you know, they're sending spies into these particular lands. Okay, to do what? Spy out the land so they can take it down. Okay, so that's where you go to verse one. And Joshua, the son of Nun, Okay, sent out of Shittim two men to spy secretly, saying, "Go view the land, even Jericho." And when they, and when they went and came into a harlot's house named Rahab and lodged there, so they're spies. And it was told the king of Jericho. Uh, it was told the king of Jericho, saying, "Behold, there came mither, came men in hither tonight of the children of Israel secretly to search out." Okay, and the king of Jericho sent unto Rahab, saying, Bring forth the men that are come of thee, which are entered into thine house, for they are come to search out the country. And the woman took the two men and hid them, and said, There came men unto me, but I wish, uh, wish not where they went. So she hid them. There was an order given unto her, saying, What? Bring them so we can put them to death, basically, or bind them, or whatever the king wanted to do. But she hid them. All right, which was a good act in forwarding our kingdom. So she betrayed her own people for the Israelites. Good job, baby. Okay, so she hit them. Let's 
Let's see. And you can read the rest of that, but I'm going to go back here. So verse 11, it says, And as soon as we have heard these things, our hearts did melt, neither did there remain any more courage in any man because of you. For Yahweh, your God, he is God in heaven above and in earth beneath. And she's acknowledging the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, which all heathen will do. Okay? Scriptures say every knee will bow, all right, to Yahweh, Bashem, Yahweh, Shai. Okay? It says, now, therefore, I pray you swear unto me by the Lord, since I have showed you kindness, that ye will also show kindness unto my father's house and give me a true token. That ye will save alive my father and mother and my brethren and my sisters in all that they have and delivered our lives from death. And the men answered her, our life for yours if ye utter not this our business so if you don't say nothing where we are you don't tell them where we are we will grant you the promise that you wish for and what, what was that promise not to put her family to death as the walls of jericho were going to come crashing down and it shall be when the lord have given us the land that we deal kindly and truly with thee what what what, what how does this give them salvation how does this give them salvation it doesn't give them fal some, uh, uh, salvation however when we take over the land we're going to deal good we're going to deal fairly with you it was an agreement how does this give them inheritance rights how does this give them salvation okay if we did fulfill everything under that first covenant, when we got to the Holy Land, this family just would have been set up and given a nice portion of land for, for what they did. Nothing more. They wouldn't be ruling. They wouldn't be giving orders. Okay. Anyway. It says. Then she let them down by a cord through the window for her house was upon a tall a town upon the town wall and she dwelt upon the wall and she said unto them go get you to the mountain lest the pursuers meet you and hide yourselves there three days until the pursuers be returned and afterward ye go your way and the men said unto her will we be will we be blameless of this thine oath which thou made us swear so they're like look you remember the oath because, look, she a heathen. They're like, you know, is she going to turn on us? Is she, you know, they don't know. They're on a mission. Behold, when we come into the land, thus shalt thou bind this line of scarlet thread in thine window, which thou didst let us down by. All right. And that will be basically a sign to know that this is that family. This is that harlot that helped us in her family. Put this, you know, this uh, string or thread, scarlet or red thread on the window. And thou shalt bring thy father and thy mother and thy brethren and all thy father's household home unto thee. And it shall be that whosoever shall go out of the doors out of thine house into the street, his blood shall be upon his head and we will be guiltless. And whosoever shall be with thee in, thy, in the house, his blood shall be on our head if any hand be upon him. And if thou utter this our business, then we will be quit of thine oath, which thou made us swear. And you go get y'all, y'all go get destroyed. And she said, according to your words, so be it. And sent them away and they departed. And she bound the scarlet line in the window. And they went and came into the mountain and abode there three days until the pursuers were returned. And the pursuers sought them throughout all the way, but found them not. So the two men returned and descended from the mountain and passed over and came to Joshua, the son of Nun, and told them all the things. And they said unto Joshua, truly, the Lord have delivered into our hands all the land. They still took down the people. It's just this particular family. All right. We're given grace. For even all the inhabitants of the country do faint because of us. He's telling them the story now. 
When you go to Joshua, the sixth chapter, this is the conquest of Jericho. Okay. The people of Jericho will st were still taken down. Okay. You can read that story, but I'm going to just jump. Israel, you know, the Israelites uh, still took it down. The people were still conquered. But amongst the people that they conquered, there was just a family that favor was shown upon. There's nothing wrong with that. You know, there's nothing wrong with that. that, uh, that but that does not mean <laughs> that they're granted the same position and order as the Israelites. No. It's showing you these Christians are reaching. I'll jump to 16, Joshua 6 and 16. You can read all of these stories on your own. We're just hitting these points. It says, and it came to pass at the seventh uh, time when they circled, when the priest blew the trumpets, Joshua said unto the people, shout for the Lord have given you the city. And the city shall be accursed. Even it and all that are therein to the Lord, Yahweh, only Rahab the harlot shall live. She and all that are with her in her house. All right. Because she hid the messengers that we sent. OK, so she lied to her people for the benefit of our people. That's her glory. That's her history. All right. And she eventually got popped <laughs> by Solomon, the grandfather of Boaz. OK. And who was Boaz, the grandfather of King David? Hey, call hello, Yahweh Bashim Shai. Anyway, it says, and, and ye in, in any wise keep yourselves from the accursed thing, lest ye make yourselves accursed. All right, don't follow their gods, don't bow to none of that. Look, just get that family out of there, okay? Because there was a deal, a covenant made with them, an agreement. And they fulfilled their part, so we're going to fulfill our part. When ye take of the accursed thing and make the camp of Israel a curse and trouble it, but all the silver and gold and vessels of brass and iron are consecrated unto Yahweh, they shall come into thine treasury of the Lord. Leave all those gods and idols, right? See, the Christians don't want to talk about this part. They don't want to talk about the throne of David and how the heathen were ultimately in subject unto him. Okay, even the family line that Hiram came from. All right, those Hamites. But that doesn't mean we didn't deal, deal fairly with particular of the heathen. Anyway, so the people shouted when the priest blew the trumpets. It came to pass when the people heard the sound of the trumpet. All right, and you can keep reading that. Verse 21 in the. They utterly destroyed all that was in the city, both man and woman, young and old, and ox and sheep and ass with the two-edged sword. But Joshua said unto the men that spied out the country, go into the harlot's house and bring out thence the woman and all she hath, as ye swear unto her. And the young men that were the spies went in and brought out Rahab and her father and her mother and all her brethren and all that she had. And they brought out all her kindred. She betrayed her own people for the Israelites. That's her legacy. Hey, we'll take it. And left them without the camp of Israel. Okay? If people forget, these are real life situations. These men are at war. Okay? So a, they're, they're, while they're at war and taking down these heathen, they, they come across, you know, as they're spying out the land, they come across this harlot. And she worked, the, the Lord put the spirit on her to work a work. To work in their favor. But you know what a nigga's gonna say? Well, they were Israelites. No, no, these were heathen. So the, your 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 doctrine that an Israelite man can't lay with a heathen and an Israelite comes out as cut because that's even in the Messiah's lineage. Two heathen, Ruth and Rahab. So shut up. Verse 25, and Joshua saved Rahab, the harlot alive in her father's household and all that she had. And she dwelled in Israel even unto this day because she hid the messengers which Joshua sent to spy out Jericho. So her and her family were safe and cool and good 
under the Israelites. All right. As the Lord has the spirit on them as they're going and conquering. Okay. And Joshua adjured them at that time saying, curse be the man before the Lord that riseth up and build it. This city, Jericho, you try to build it up again. You cursed. All right. He, they destroyed it. He shall lay the foundation thereof in his firstborn and in his youngest son shall he set up the gates of it. So the Lord was with Joshua and the, his fame noised throughout all the country. Okay. And you don't see her name anymore. Let's see here. You don't see her name anymore. Right. After that, until pretty much you go to the New Testament in Yahweh Shai's lineage and you find out that David's great, great grandfather, Solomon. OK, laid with her. Now, does that mean that they are saved? Well, we're going to get the book of Zechariah, the 14th chapter, which is a future prophecy to end it all. OK. The Hamites will not be joint heirs, okay? They will not have inheritance rights. They will not have the law, statutes, and commandments written in their inward part. They will not be a part of the new covenant, okay? But if there's a particular family amongst them that will be treated differently than the rest of the slaves, then, hey, that's the Lord's uh, uh, will. It still doesn't take away from what we teach, but here's the point. God will be king over all. OK, showing you this is a future prophecy. Now, the verse 12, and this shall be the plague wherewith the Lord will smite all the people that have fought against Jerusalem. Their flesh shall consume away while they stand up on their feet. All right. War, fire and their eyes shall consume away in their holes and their tongues shall consume away in their mouth. OK, so uh, wars, tumults, you know, hell. You know, people fighting against his neighbor. All of that is going to be happening. And then as we're going to jump down. Here's the point that cuts all of this garbage you Christians are talking about. Zechariah 14 and 16. And it shall come to pass that everyone that is left of all the nations which came against Jerusalem. All right. Because remember, all of these nations are going to be judged. OK. Uh, remember, we read that in the book of Joel, the third chapter. OK. Uh, when he brings again the captivity of Judah and Jerusalem, he said he's going to gather all the nations and bring them down to the valley of Yahweh Shapat. All right. Over in the Middle East and plead with them for what they did to the Israelites. Right. So going back here, we know, according to prophecy, not all of the heathen are going to be destroyed. There's going to be a lot left. OK. So it's saying. And it shall come to pass that everyone that is left of all the nations which came against Jerusalem or all you heathen shall even go up from one year to worship the king, the Lord of hosts, and to keep the tabernacles, the Feast of Tabernacles. You're going to have to follow our holy days, just like here. Christmas is shoved down our throats when the kingdom of heaven, the Feast of Tabernacle and all of the holy days. All right, that are synonymous with the Israelites through the spirit and power of Yahweh Hashem Shai will be shoved down your throat. You will have to follow our ways, and that's a fact. Okay. And it shall be that whoso will not come up of all the families of the earth unto Jerusalem to worship the King, the Lord of Hosts, even upon them shall be no rain. So if you don't want to follow our our ways and our laws. This is giving you a prelude to how it's going to be. When you don't follow our laws, we will have the ability to plague you. Here's some more points. And if the family of Egypt go not up and come not, which what are the Egyptians? Hamites. OK. <laughs> and if the family of Egypt go not up and come not that have no rain. There shall be the plague wherewith the Lord will smite the heathen that come not up to keep the Feast of Tabernacles. So you heathen are going to be smitten. And this shall be the punishment of Egypt and the punishment of all nations that come not up to keep the Feast of Tabernacles. Because remember, we're going to be teaching you heathen. Let's get that 
in the book of uh, Micah, the fourth chapter. Okay, Micah, the fourth chapter. But in the last days it shall come to pass that the mountain of the house of the Lord shall be established in the top of the mountains. And it shall be exalted above the hills, and people shall flow unto it. This is the, the mountain, is the government of Yashala, the tabernacle of David, that is going to be established. And it shall be exalted above the hills, and people shall flow unto it. As the book of Daniel says, okay, what did, what did, what did uh, the book of Daniel, the second chapter, say? Since I'm thinking of it, let me just hit it real quick. Daniel 2. Okay, in 44, in the days of these kings shall the God of heaven set up a kingdom which shall never be destroyed and the kingdom shall not be left to other people, but it shall break in pieces and consume all these kingdoms and it shall stand forever. So it's not going to be for everybody. It's going to be for the Israelites. However, there will be benefits that the heathen get. All right. For a righteous government being set up because they're going to learn the ways of righteousness. Micah 4 and 2, and many nations shall come and say, come, let us go up to the mountain of the Lord and to the house of the God of Jacob, and he will teach us of his ways, and we will walk in his paths. For the law shall go forth of Zion and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. You see that? So they're going to want to learn our ways, but as we're reading here in Zechariah, OK, because we know, according to prophecy, they're not going to have the law, statutes and commandments written in their inward parts. Hebrews, the eighth chapter. OK, going into the new covenant. Hebrews eight and ten. As a matter of fact, we'll start at eight and jump down for finding fault with them. He said, behold, the days come, saith the Lord, that I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and the house of Judah. Northern and southern kingdom. Not according to the covenant I made with their fathers. All right. In the day I took them by the hand to lead them out of the land of Egypt. Because they continue not in my covenant and I regarded them not, saith the Lord. For this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, saith the Lord. I will put my laws into their mind and write them in their hearts and they will be unto me. I will be unto them a God and they shall be unto me a people. And they shall not teach every man his neighbor saying or his brother saying, no, the Lord. We're not going to have to teach any other Israelite. To know the Lord, for all shall know me from least to the greatest. For I'll be, be merciful and see that all, speaking of all the house of Israel and the house of Judah, we're not going to have to teach any Israelite to repent that you shouldn't eat rat, that you shouldn't commit adultery. It's going to be in them. That's the blessing the Israelites have. That's salvation, right? So, here, as we read in Zechariah, the 12th chapter, in the fact that we just read in Micah, okay, we just read that we, we're not going to have to uh, 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 teach Israelites, but we just read in Micah that the heathen are going to have to be taught the, the ways of the law. So here in Zechariah 14 and 17, which this is speaking of in the kingdom, okay, the, the fact that a heathen will not come up is possible Showing you that they're, they're, they're not going to have the laws written in them. They're going to deal with the flesh. Okay. And they're going to be uh, 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 learning, but there, there may be points where they fall short. I don't want to go. Well, if you don't want to go, let's go up to verse 18, Zechariah 14 and 18. You don't come up to the Feast of Tabernacles. Ain't no rain coming for you. Okay. Famine. Plagues. We can play. The scriptures say we can plague the the earth <laughs> howsoever often we want now esau does this with his heart program we'll have this in the spirit and if the family of egypt go not up and come not that have no rain there shall be the plague wherewith the lord will smite the heathen that come not to keep the feast of tabernacles come not up to keep the feast of tabernacles this shall be the punishment of egypt and the punishment of all nations that come not up to keep the feast of tabernacles and that day there shall be upon the bells of the horses holiness unto the Lord, and the pots of the Lord's house shall be like bowls before the altars. All right, that priesthood is going to be established, babe. <laughs> All right, next level. Yea, every pot in Jerusalem and Judah shall be holiness unto the Lord of hosts. See, when did that happen? 
And all they that sacrifice shall come and take of them and seethe therein. And in that day there shall be no more Canaanite in the house of the Lord of hosts. So Rahab and her family, okay, were, were uh, uh, Hamites. We just read about the family of Egypt and the Canaanites. Okay, not being on the same level of the Israelites in biblical prophecy, which cuts everything you damn people are talking about. And damn means condemned. As a matter of fact, when you go and look up, you know, Rahab the harlot. Okay, it, it lets you know she was a Canaanite who were hated enemies of Israel. So while, while they were hated, right? There was just this family that the Lord had mercy on at that particular time because of what the harlot, the Canaanite harlot Rahab did for the Israelites. But we, we just read in biblical prophecy, ain't going to be no Canaanite, all right, uh, uh, being joint or in a holy land at that time in the kingdom. However, will Rahab and that family you know, receive some form of mercy when the kingdom is established. You know, it's a possibility. We'll see that when we get there. All right. But as we showed you, uh, you know, David, Solomon, they dealt fairly with particular of the heathen, but they were still in subject to them. So. That's it, man. And Caleb was an Israelite. Anybody saying Caleb was a heathen is bugged out. Because Caleb got, he was the first to get the inheritance of the landmass of Judah. And if reading numbers and all of that, if a man had a daughter and no sons, she would have to marry of her own family. Like if it was that serious, how in the hell could an Edomite, because they say he's an Edomite, how in the hell can an Edomite, the, the, the arch enemy, the, the, you know, the, the devil himself be the first to get an inheritance of the land of Judah, man. You people are bugged out through and we're just going to continue cutting you. All right. So I'm going to leave that there. I think that's it. Hopefully I'll edify any questions. Ask on the comment board. Shalom.